Welcome. We're happy you're joining us here to learn more about our expectations for the upcoming winter. Hopefully all the COVID craziness isn't hindering your operation at all. Who's ready for some snow? Bring it. Bring it on. Our presentation is geared towards the snow removal industry and also great for municipalities. The winter outlook is always a big interest. This is a detailed analysis as we look at the whys behind the forecast. We'll discuss some of the major pattern drivers and the reasoning behind our forecast. Some of the big drivers that we watch are pressure and temperature differences in certain locations around the globe. They connect together and correlate to jet stream locations, storm tracks, precipitation, and more. Of course, one of the biggest questions we get is how the weather will impact you. And this is true with both our winter forecast and our day-to-day -day forecasting. So we'll discuss how the precipitation and temperature trends look to impact you. Let's break it all down. Before we dive into this year's winter forecast, let's take a look at last year's winter forecast. We're gonna focus on our temperature outlook we issued last winter. We had plenty of warm air across the west coast, slightly above average temperatures for portions of the southeast, and our sweet spot for cold air, if you will, was the Great Lakes, portions of the northern plains, down into the Ohio Valley, and portions of the northeastern United States. And uh, we felt this was a pretty good forecast for a weak El Nino year. Let's see how we did. Oh, not too good, huh? No, pretty much everybody was warm where we thought the coldest area would be. Well, as luck would have it, that's where some of the warmest temperatures of the winter were. Uh, some places were three to five degrees above average. So it didn't work out too well. We weren't the only ones. By the middle of the winter, most everybody had thrown out their winter forecast. There was just at that point no hope of any sustained cold air coming in. Uh, long enough to really change what had already happened. Actually, the only places that had cold air long enough to be even just slightly below average were portions of the Rocky Mountains. Everywhere else was uh, pretty much above average for the winter, uh, especially the eastern half of the United States. So this was a weak El Nino. This year, we're looking at a La Nina. And when we look at the determining factor El Nino versus La Nina, we look along the equator in the Pacific Ocean, and we look at the sea surface temperatures there. Uh, and what we see this year are blue, plenty of blue. That's cooler than average temperatures. We actually saw this starting to set up back in the spring. It does take a lot of time. Uh, some of our coldest air is actually uh, towards the eastern side of the Pacific Ocean, just off the coast of South America. And some of these temperatures are two to four degrees below normal. Now where this cold water sets up does have a factor where we see colder and warmer air set up across portions of the United States and Canada. But this is just one factor out of many. And uh, there are definitely other factors that are gonna come into play this winter as well. Now how strong of a La Nina will we have? That is important as well. All of the major models are uh, hitting at a uh, fairly weak to almost moderate La Nina. Actually, the average is favoring a, a weak La Nina, uh, floating on the verge of moderate. A couple models here uh, are kind of in the uh, neutral category, but most everything showing at least a weak La Nina, if not a moderate one. Nothing hinting at uh, an El Nino by any means. Now, again, this is just one of the factors. Brian's gonna go over some of the other things we look at as we craft our winter forecast for this winter. So it's at least good to know that we have some confidence in the type of ENSO cycle that we're going to be, but that also allows us to have better confidence in different areas of the world with different pressure and temperature patterns across the oceans that influence the atmosphere right over the good USA. So this is what we're confident in as far as the overall jet stream pattern. It's going to ride pretty average compared to a regular winter, but that doesn't mean the temperatures and um, amounts of rainfall and snow are just going to be near average either. Again, many more factors, but we do expect a pretty active pattern across the Pacific Northwest into the Northern Plains as well. As these storms dip down and follow the jet stream, they become panhandle hooks or Colorado lows that typically formats a very active pattern for portions of the Great Lakes. We'll see if that's true. Now, in order to be a good meteorologist with long range forecasting, you need to be a good climatologist and look back at previous year's data. We're looking for analog years, which we've talked about many times before in these seasonal forecasts, very important. 
They're similar type seasons to what we've seen over the last several months, what we're seeing currently, and what we expect to see as we go throughout the next few months. So similar patterns in different areas of the world. The ENSO cycle, La Nina, El Nino, or a neutral. The EPO, which is the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, influencing areas across the Pacific Northwest, all the way up into uh, Alaska. QBO and MGO more in the way of tropical type signals. These are the years that we picked out with a big and heavy influence on the La Nina and active tropical seasons. We've had a lot of tropical storms and hurricanes, 88, 89, 95, 96, so forth and so on look similar. Now, back in the past, around August, when we were looking into winter ideas, we were looking at some years that were much warmer but because of fall not really having a great track record so far, we've cooled it off a little bit and it does come off pretty cool when we average these different winter years together. So this is December through February and that is some pretty chilly weather in areas of the country that already see a decent amount of cold. You got the La Nina look with milder temperatures across the deep south and especially across a very dry regime in the southeast as it looks likely. It's already wet in the Pacific Northwest, but look at that, well above average precipitation according to this analog. So we know what kind of the models, we don't know what the models say yet, we know what it looks like in the past. What do the models say, Mark? Well, let's take a look at the models and uh, we're gonna see a lot of uh, warmer air in these models. Now that doesn't mean that's how our forecast is gonna shape up. Um, but it's just, again, one of the things we do look at. We'll start with the European model. Um, it has a bit of a warm bias. It's not really done that great this year, unfortunately. Uh, but what we see is a fairly warm pattern setting up for much of the United States. Uh, this winter, really no cold air anywhere. Actually, the coldest temperatures, if you will, will be across portions of the West where we see near average conditions. Again, it has a bit of a warm bias. So, uh, this isn't too much of a surprise. Now let's look at the American CFS model and uh, it's a bit of a different story here. And you go, well, if that has a warm bias, what does this have? Uh, plenty of warm air across the deep south and the northern Mexico, still warm across the Gulf Coast and even on up into the northeast and portions of the Great Lakes as well. Uh, but what's different about this and, and probably a little bit more noticeable is the colder air across the Pacific Northwest. Now it's not crazy cold, uh, the core of it's more into Canada. Uh, but this lines up with that jet stream graphic we showed you a moment ago. This is where we would expect cooler and wetter conditions right here. So it lines up fairly well, especially with the warmer air, which would be south of the jet stream. Uh, so this isn't actually too bad by any means. Uh, it's a, a pretty good model to look at at this point in time. There's others to look at too. Uh, for instance, this model here, and uh, it shows uh, what we might call a blowtorch, if you will, across much of the United States, which is well above average temperatures for a good portion of the country. I mean, look at Hudson Bay. We're maxed out here. That's a lot of big time heat uh, in that area as well. Now, we're not talking, you know, 80s or 90s, but uh, well above average temperatures compared to what we would normally see in the wintertime up there. And it does get quite cold up there, so to see uh, well above average temperatures there is uh, quite something. This is a bit extreme, so um, it's not necessarily our forecast by any means, but uh, we look at all the models that we can. Uh, at the Japanese model, it's a bit more interesting. Doesn't get a lot of respect, but climatologically it does pretty good. Uh, interesting about this is the colder air right here in Western Canada that gets down into the northern portion of the United States. So we're talking about the Dakotas, Montana, and even into Minnesota to some degree. Uh, this is quite interesting right here, and that lines up with that jet stream we had too. Notice the warm air though across the south and up the, into the northeastern United States, so that starts making sense. Okay, moving on, we have the Canadian model here, and uh, this is more of a nice happy medium between the European and the American CFS model, trying to bring everybody together. Um, and it does all right. We have the, the bulk of the warm air across the central United States, still warm across much of the east, and then we have a little bit of slightly below average temperatures across western Canada. That could get down in the portions of the uh, Pacific Northwest as well. Not too far fetched off from uh, what we were seeing with the other models, but um, kind of a happy medium, if you will. Now we're gonna take all this, we're gonna put it together, and Brian 
is going to show you our winter forecast. That's always what we're looking for, that happy medium. And we are honestly taking a blend of the different models because they've been pretty good over the last few years and the analogs and putting that together. And this provides a decent amount of cold air, some very potent cold shots coming in from the Pacific Northwest through the Northern Plains, even into the Midwest. We're going to have mild weather dominating. Most of the winter will generally be mild, but there will be some big cold air outbreaks coming eastward. Unfortunately, I, I, if you like snow, I don't think you're going to see too much across the deep south into the southeast. This looks like a pretty warm pattern with that big ridging dominating across portions of that area. So we're going to have a wintry battle zone. It's not going to be necessarily right where you think, though. It's actually going to be a little bit more into the warm area because we have all this rain, well above average rain for an area that already sees a plentiful amount. And when you factor in the colder temperatures, wait till you see the snow side of things, and then pretty wet across this area too. Does that mean it's going to be mostly in the way of rain? Not necessarily. Yes, there should probably be more rain events than average, less snow events than average, but we think the pattern is ripe for major winter storms to happen across portions of the middle of the country, out across the Great Lakes, maybe Toronto, even into Montreal at times. So you might actually see a lot more snowfall than the last few years, despite warm temperatures again. Now this is where winter is really ripe, cold and snow coming together, even the lower elevations likely seeing a good bout of winter weather. The coldest temperatures compared to average look like they will be late fall into the first few weeks of winter. There is good confidence on fairly mild weather dominating January and February, which means winter may be more front-loaded than normal. Yeah, it seems that way. As always, there's certain elements like the Arctic Oscillation, NAO, MGO, that have big impacts on the overall pattern. Unfortunately, we just can't forecast those months ahead of time. In areas across the Midwest, Great Lakes, and into the Northeast, it might be generally warm, but with the cold shots and active pattern, we could still have some big snows. They just won't be piling up. Milder temperatures should fill in behind these systems so melting will follow. Even though the east might be pretty warm again for periods of time, don't be surprised to see some big winter storms. If you want to save time and money, then contact us today. Mention this winter forecast to get 20% off your first month of services with NeoWeather. You'll have peace of mind getting detailed and accurate forecasts for your location and impacts to your operation. Yeah, you'll be happy that you're making better decisions and saving thousands of dollars compared to trusting those automated weather apps. Check out our website and request a free quote today. Thank you very much for watching.